for the last, I don't know, three, three years or so, I've been rather um, interested in, in questioning what the purpose of school is. Because you know, it's, it's like the question, what is technology? Most people, when you ask them that, uh, they think, well, this is a silly question. Everybody knows. Uh, but when you start to dig into it, it's really a complex question. And people who will assume that there's a common, common answer to that will um, often be surprised when they find out other people sh don't share their, their answer. And this is especially uh, an issue when we start talking about policy, school policy, school funding. And, um, and the answers that you get from different people in different walks of life can be very, very different. And I started asking people this just, just informally and, and wasn't doing any kind of formal project on this for quite some time, but started asking this question to my students uh, three years ago. And typically I would hear from students when I asked what's the purpose of school, it's, it was, uh, well, so we can get a good job. Um, when I asked parents, sometimes they'd, they'd say, so that my student can function, or my kid can function in the world. And when I'd ask, when I'd ask, uh, uh, people at businesses, they would usually say, um, it, it's, it's the economy. <laughs> you know, we have to prepare kids for jobs. Um, or if, I, if I'd ask teachers, they'd usually say, um, the, most teachers would, would say, it's it, you know, to instill a love of learning. Um, but I, I, it, it, really, it really kind of drew this line between, well, there's about, there's about as many purposes for school as there are, are people. So when we start writing policy, we're, we're kind of going against what we've always been taught as educators that we need to start with the objective. If we don't have a clearly defined objective or we can't all agree on that, we need to at least be aware of everybody else's objectives. And so it's been kind of a, it's been a, a personal project to, to draw this out and hopefully get people to start talking about that again. Um, and so, well, to, um, to how, do you, how do you answer the question? Uh, well, I, I <laughs> um, at, I would have answered uh, it differently three years ago than I do now. Uh, three years ago, I would have said that ed or the pr purpose of school is to um, make make people people better or help help them to better themselves. And and today, I'm I'm really at a loss for what the purpose of, of it is. And I, I think it depends on what school you're talking about. Um, some schools have very specific purposes in which there there's no there's no uh, uh, no question, you know, for instance, the, the a school of business or the, the um, a, an arts magnet school, there's no, there's no real question as to why, why those kids go there. Um, a tra regular public school though, that's, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to question that completely. You know, I, I believe we, we think it's to make people better, but there are also some really interesting, uh, negative side effects and there, there's, um, you know, and the the, un, the unschooling movement, for instance, is really drawing out a lot of a lot of that. And I think I think educators need to really pay attention to what what is what is causing that, or why are people why are people involved in that? And can you explain doing? that briefly, because people may so, not know the unschooling you know, the movement? Un unschooling is a is a trend where parents are choosing to not send their kids to school but they're not really homeschooling them in the traditional sense. In the tr traditional sense of you get curriculum materials and you just do, do school at home. Um, unschooling is based in a, a theory that, that children can self-select and their self-selection will, will select what's best for their learning needs. Um, it's also rooted in the idea that, um, that the children are gonna learn what they wanna learn anyway, whether we, no matter what we put in front of them. And, uh, it, you know, to, to many, the, the idea of this sounds just uh, absolutely abhorrent and uh, neglectful. And uh, the people within that movement will tell you that it's actually the other way around, <laughs> that, that schooling is actually a harmful thing and we're, we're all b being delusional about it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm willing to, to take sides on this, and I'm, I'm really fascinated by this, this whole this so you're a dad. How, how old are your kids? And, and well, your, your thoughts as far as being a dad with, with, with school, uh, when you think of a school and a school experience for your kids, what, what do you want that to look like? Uh, well, I have, okay, my, I, I'm a dad. I have a, I have a two-year-old and a, and a five-year-old. Five-year-old just started kindergarten this fall. And maybe this is also a reason why this is such a pressing question for me is because 
you know, and you know, set, setting setting off your firstborn to school is is, is kind of nerve wracking. And we, we, we didn't do it all. We didn't we didn't do it all in one jump. She went to preschool and and um, and, and and got ready for it. And and uh, I guess what I want what I want her to get out of school is um, access to access to things that we can't provide at home. Um, and I would, I, would, I, would, I would like to see that the things that, that are, are personally uh, meaningful to her and provide motivation are not squashed by school. And I'm not so much concerned about what school can provide. I'm, I'm more concerned about the, the things that school will, will eliminate from her. And so I guess my own personal philosophy has been we're going to school her during the day and unschool her at home. And and try and try and um, try and nourish everything mm -hmm. on both ends. And when the two year old gets to be five and she enters school, we'll probably do the same thing. Although I'm sure we'll do do it slightly different. <laughs> awesome. Thanks.